up don't take one well hi guys um it's been a while since i've actually done any filming of any sort and since i've been out actually it's been quite a while i've been wanting to get out but what with work um my work can get quite intensive at times and i get home and i can feel quite tired but I've been having a bit, I've been having a good old think about the whole bushcraft aspect of life, um, or the thing that we call bushcraft. For a great majority of people out there, it's just the sheer fact of going out into the woods with a with the ability with the with the intention to make a fire, cook a steak, and that's about it. There is no craft aspect to what they're doing. Um, to me, there is craft, and it often gets forgotten. Um, and when I'm talking about craft, I'm talking about the making of things. Not necessarily making a knife, but all the other little things. You know, these people, whether they're um, all these indigenous people all over the world, and non-indigenous people, guys like Dick Pranecki, they all produced something at the end of the day. Dick Pranecki built himself a log cabin. Um, Alone in the Wilderness is an excellent little video if you, can, if you can find it on the net. It's around there. There's three in a series altogether. Um, amazing guy. But when you look at the guys like Ray Mears and people like him that have gone out and studied what, and was Kahansky, and then studied what the indigenous people and what people have done as skills for living out, not for living out in the bush. Um, this year I want to expand on my skills. I want to, I've done a lot of camping out. I haven't done so much last year and I want to do a bit more this year and I, and I want to do a little bit more solo camping and more going out on my own rather than with a group of people. There are a couple of reasons for that. One of them is obviously financial. Um, but I also want to expand on my skill sets. I've um, been doing a bit of research lately and I've, I've seen a direction I want to go, go into and that's weaving. Um, different types of weaving using a Inca loom, which is a, a small loom, or it can be a floor standing loom, which is my, done for making ribbons. Um, tablet weaving, I've started to make my tablets, just got to draw the four holes in these. I've got eight tablets here, and so that should be wide enough for the time being. And you can use these in conjunction with an Inca loom. Um, and I should be making one of those in the next month or so. Uh, I just need to get the timber. Um, I want to do a Sami rigid heddle, which looks like a bit of a cone. Um, they're about, they can be about that big, and you've got little slats. Looks like a Venetian blind, and you've got holes in, and use that for weaving. Um, I want to make a Nalhus, which is needle housing. And if I can. I've got a needle case made out of one of these, which is a uh, deer leg bone. Um, I hope the hole is big enough in the bone, in this size bone, to make the nalhus, which is basically a needle. It's a repair kit used by the Sami, where you've got a little bit of buckskin. You thread your needles, whether they're steel or bone, a bit of sinew or imitation sinew, or very strong thread. Someone use a uh, chap, chap that I know of uses uh, a uh, very fine bank line. You wrap it round, you pull it in, and it hangs off your belt. You've got a ready-made, um, a ready-made sewing kit there. Um, also, I want to have a guy make it doing a bit more of this. Um, a friend of a, a friend that I know did this for me. That's um, Portuguese sinnet, or what is now known as a cobra knot, but it's actually if you if you look in a lot of the knot books, this comes up as a Portuguese sinnet. 
and making those which are square knot sinnets. Um, you can use any type of cord to make uh, for strengthening cord up, uh, making zip pulls and other useful items. In fact if you take the kern out of this, do a square knot sinnet, it makes a really good neck strap for a set of binoculars or whatever. Um, you need to make a loose set which I'll be doing in another video. Um, getting out into the woods, I want to focus a bit more on wild food this year. It is sort of my raison d'etre. I, I, I enjoy cooking outdoors. And it, it's great fun to do that. Um, I've got that to finish off as, with that. That's a piece of walnut. And that's a knife blade obviously. And I'm going to put that onto that and make the handle down. Um, I was going to do a sort of like a, a, a fancy handle, you know, with different layers, bit of antler at one end and what have you, but it's obtaining the raw materials. I managed to get myself a little piece of walnut and it looks nice, so I'm going to do that and carve and shape it up. Um, there is my first attempt at handling a knife and, I've, and I feel that I've really got to work on the handle a bit more. I've got to get a rasp out. And I've got to take it down here, and so so it's a little bit thinner. It's a it's a very chunky handle, and I find it hard to get a good grip. And that's a knife I made. I actually made this myself, and I was quite proud. Got to make a, a, a nice little um, nice sort of thing. So as I said, this year I'm focusing on crafts, and it's mostly in the weaving line. Um, if you look at Sami outfit, the traditional Sami outfit, you find that there are like little patterns on their hats, on the collars, around the cuffs, and around the waistline and around the hem. Now these different patterns can denote whether someone's single, married, what clan they come from, very much, it's a language very much like the Tartan of Scotland and though I shan't be I should be looking at doing different patterns. Um, I'm going back to bead weaving. As some of you may or may not know, I, I have uh, in the past done Zulu and Native American style bead weaving. And it's quite, it's quite an interesting subject. Some of it I've done as peyote stitch or gourd stitch and some of it I've done as loom weave stuff. Um, if, if any of you know Sandy, he's got a hat band I'll put up as a competition. Um, and some of that I'll be doing. Um, I'll be exploring a lot, I'll be doing a lot more this year, hopefully, on exploring things like wildflowers, natural, uh, the flora, fauna, and fungi of life. Um, I've got a nice new lens for the camera which is a macro lens so I can do a few more close-ups and it's got a it's a uh, 18 to 200 mm lens great great little lens it suits my needs it's not it's almost professional quality it's just a little step down it's a Tamron lens and it suits me down to the ground I just need to take the one lens out when I go I'm just trying to think of anything else I've got no it's just working through all these books I've got here. I've accumulated a lot of books over the years. I really want to focus on the craft side of the bushcraft. I really want to get my head down, get into doing stuff. Um, I've been treading water so much lately. I've been wanting to get out. The weather's not been too good, but as Ramia says, if you only go out in good weather, you're missing half of the fun getting out in this weather it has different a different aspect to it it's cold it can be bone country and cold in the southeast we have a damp cold in england and it can be right thing right narky but as i say i've got a lot of uh, a lot of projects going on got to finish my shrimp net i've been trying i've been meaning to do that for months i've been putting it off for months and months and months i've got to sort out in a man cave because the man cave is a right pickle I've been doing a little bit of it today. I've sent some stuff up. I want to set up something within my Kishpush Craft Boot Group. Um, it's going to be a 
partly a competition and partly a swap. I, you know, sort of got work out too. And I'm going to do, try and do a bit more filming of all the stuff that I'm doing. Um, I've taken my cam, I've taken my stills camera out a couple of times, and I wish I'd taken this out. I, I have missed a couple of opportunities. Um, it's trying to get out. I don't have a car, so getting out to other locations can be a bit awkward at times. But I would like to do a few more overnights. Avalon willing. Anyway, guys, um, that's just a short update. And just to recap, more crafting. And to that end, it's going to be making tablets for tablet weaving, setting up a, uh, a backstrap loom. Also, also, I want to have another go at buck skinning this year as well. Um, it's obtaining the skin, which which won't be too difficult. I've got a few contacts for that, and it's actually making the stuff. I've got a little piece here. I've got a complete skin behind me, and I picked this up from a from a box. Um, I was trying to explain buck skinning to someone at work the other day, and it, I, I just couldn't explain. I couldn't understand why someone would do it, but. When you feel this stuff, and when you smell it, you know you got. A, so this hasn't got such much, so much of a woody smell, um, and it's use. I mean, you can make a complete outfit. It's very expensive to do in in times of effort. You got a lot, of, put a lot of effort to make this. Will take three days possibly, and uh, you got to flesh it. You got to tan it. You have got to um, tan it. You've got to well, you've got to smoke it, you've got to work it. It takes a whole day just to get this supple. You're staking it out. But this little piece, I've got uses for this little piece, you know, for, I've got a couple of pouches in here maybe, and a little piece for my uh, Nalhus. Um, Nalhus is spelled N A L H U S. It means needle house in, the, uh, in, a, in a Scandinavian language. Look it up on the internet. There's some wonderful, there's some wonderful examples there of where they've done scrimshaw work. I shan't, I might do attempt to do a little bit, of, bit of engraving on the bone, and then rub it over with a bit of, bit of charcoal or whatever, just to bring it out. Um, it's some, it's, an, it's another avenue I want to go down, but I will never be of the quality of some of these. These people that have done these narcosses and have done the pattern work on the. Uh, Sami knife sheaves, they've been doing it for a long time and like any skill it requires time to perfect. Anyway guys, any questions about about what I'm attempting to do and any um, any advice you can give I'll gladly take it on board. I'm also going to do a bit of basket weaving, I've got plenty of rattan here I've inherited. I made a bower as you saw earlier in the year and it's all power to all power to me elbow. I'm going to attempt to do at least a video once a fortnight if I can do it. Maybe once a week. God willing. Anyway, guys, I've whittled on enough. As I say, ideas keep them rolling in. I want to try and build up a good community. Um, I feel that I've not been as not been as proactive as I could have been. So what I'm going to do is, all you guys that know me on Facebook, join my Kiss, Bush Park, Kiss Bushcraft group. And we're going to try and work on that a bit more as well. I'm going to try and put in a lot more on the craft side of bushcraft. As I said earlier, it gets woefully neglected. And all you guys have got different skills. I know you, Sandy, great at knife making. I might have one or two challenges for you over the coming year. So guys, girls and everybody else, keep on trucking. Right guys, I'm just adding this to the end of the video. Um, in front of you there's the um, inkle loom, all, all threaded up and ready to go. It, it's taken me a good couple of hours to get it all threaded up and done, like to make the... Um, the fibre headles, if I zoom in, if I come in close, right here you've got the headles, um, that's a warp, it's warp to face looming. Um, it's got about, about one and a half metres of ribbon. 
and I saved my first, it's, it's my first thread up so it took quite a while to do right and here are the tablets I made and this is for tablet weaving which is another old an old method of weaving and that I've got some jute twine to do with that I'm going to make it use jute twine and make a couple of straps a belt or maybe something like that just to uh, practice with so it's my first time doing this sort of thing and as far as I'm concerned it's one of the arts of bushcraft anyway guys I shall bid you adieu and catch you on a video down the line I'm glad you like this